Evan, it's uh, last month marked your like, nine-year anniversary in the UFC, man. I got to ask, I mean, when you, when you got into this, did you ever think you'd have this kind of longevity and, and, and be doing this at the UFC level for so long? You know, I hope so. Uh, nine years is, is a long time, but I feel I'm just getting going. I got a few more years left in me for sure. You know, um, being here at the PT um, and at the PI has been helping me a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's keeping me young. So with this place, I'm going to be around for a while. I was going to say, I mean, as long as you've been around, it seems like you're fighting better than you ever have. So, I mean, what is the key to, to, the, the, to your success as of late? Uh, I think uh, a little less is more sometimes, learning to pull back at certain times, um, not beating myself up too much, uh, doing lots of uh, due diligence outside of camp, uh, staying in good shape. Uh, that's, I think, the key for me getting a little better. So um, I don't feel like I'm slowing down. I don't feel like I'm regressing at all. I actually feel like my technique's getting better. Uh, physically, I feel better too. Coming off a draw last time out, kind of ended the the nice win streak. What, what's the feeling after a draw, man? Such a you know kind of a unsatisfying ending to a fight, I guess. Well, I don't see it as the ending of a win streak because I didn't lose. So um, you know, a draw, I didn't know how to quite deal with it when it first happened because I never had a draw before uh, in 30 some fights. And so uh, after it happened, I was a little bummed out. But then in retrospect, I'm okay with it. Uh, it was a good performance. Got cracked early, was able to uh, you know, come back quite a bit. I thought I won the fight, but I'm sure he feels that way too. Uh, so I don't see it as a loss, I see it as a win. Yeah, originally you were matched up with Maribek Tyson off for this upcoming card. I got to ask, when that fight was given to you, were you aware of all the, the visa issues and the problems he's had? So I mean, was, it, was this something that was in the back of your mind the whole time that I might lose my opponent? Yeah, I, I actually didn't know too, too much about him, uh, besides you know, he's on a good win streak, uh, a lot of power. Uh, but then I started to hear that stuff a little bit after a signing. Uh, so, you know, that was in the back of my head, but I trained for him. I didn't expect anything besides to fight him. Um, but when it, you know, I just kind of told myself, if it, there's a change of opponent, no big deal, switch gears. Um, and when it did switch uh, and I get a different opponent, I think it's actually a style that uh, is a little bit favorable to me. So it was an easy switch for me. Was there a fear at all when, when you lost your opponent? Because I know you've had, you know, your share of fights drop out over the years. I mean, was, was there any concern like this, this fight might not happen? No concern that it wouldn't happen. I knew that I'd get on the card because uh, there was enough time. Um, I'm just happy to have an opponent. I'm happy to have somebody who's ready to get in there and get after it, who's on a little bit of a winning streak himself. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm happy with the with the opponent, you know. It would be nice to still have Mirbeck, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, last thing for me, you've been pretty complimentary of Robin Mercier so far. I mean, break him down, kind of what do you see? Why do you feel like it's kind of a maybe a more favorable matchup for you? Uh, he's a ground guy. I, I like the ground. I'm no stranger to it. So, um, you know, there's no uh, – there's no question on what he wants to do. He wants to get you against the cage. He wants to use that inside-outside trip, get you to the ground, kind of pressure you, make you turtle up, turn your back, jump on your back. And he's really good about finishing when getting out of the back. But I see that being very difficult for him with me. Um, uh, you know, so I, f I, I like to fight grapplers. I think it would be a really good fight. Um, it should be really exciting, too. So um, I'm looking forward to it. A lot. Let me ask one more because I know your affinity for grappling. So mm -hmm. I got to think Tony Ferguson, Habib never made off mm -hmm. to you is a, is a fight that you're looking forward to seeing. So give me your analysis on that. Who do you think wins that fight and why? Uh, I th man, I, it's, I'm going to go with, uh, uh, hmm. I think they're both great fighters. I think they're both good what they're able to do. And I think what's going to determine who wins and loses is if Ferguson can keep things moving. Uh, you know, if, um, uh, uh, Khabib's able to control him on the ground, like slow things down. Um, I think it's going to be Khabib all day. But if Ferguson's able to keep those scrambles going, keep everything moving, I think it'll be Ferguson. But like I said, uh, you know, Khabib's really good at slowing things down. So if he's able to do that, I'm going with Khabib. If it's, you know, if the scrambles keep up, I'm going with Ferguson. It should be a real fun fight, and I'm looking forward to it as a fan. I know you said you're taking care of your body mm -hmm. and, and you know, trying to, to give it a little bit more time, but 2018, how busy are you hoping to be? Uh, you know, I'm looking for about two fights, you know, if, if things go really good in one of them, um, you know, and I'm able to do a quick comeback, then I do three. Um, just kind of depends. I always give myself plenty of time after a fight, even if I don't take a lot of damage to recover, uh, you know, for the head and just for the body. I always take six weeks of no contact at all afterwards, except for maybe grappling. Um, so, you know, I would like to get at least one more in this year, if not two more. How, how's the gym doing? Gym's doing great. Really busy. Got two daughters. I got the gym. I got training, you know. So, uh, you know, better too busy than not busy enough is my motto right now. Sure. 
Well, even maybe having the gym and, and watching that grow as a business mm -hmm. and having sort of life set outside of, mm -hmm. of fighting, but how has that helped improve your overall fighting game, having that different aspect, being able to sit back and watch these, these, these fighters come up, you know, from the get, from the get go? Uh, yeah, the gym's helped me a lot, you know, um, you know, opening, since I've opened, I haven't lost, you know, I took a draw, but I, like I said, I don't consider that a loss, and uh, I think it's helped me because I'm not so single-minded anymore, everything's not fight, everything's not about what's going to happen in the next fight, it's, it's a lot of different moving pieces, you know, between my daughters and, and the gym, and so it doesn't give me too much time to obsess over one thing. And when I'm not obsessing over one thing, I think I'm able to be a little bit more natural in all of them um, without forcing anything. So I think it's helped a lot. The guys and gals that I have down at the gym are great. Every time I walk in there, it's it's like walking in, you know, friends and family, and it's a really good time, you know. It's it's brought the love for the sport back for me. I know that gets lost sometimes for guys that have been in the game for a while. They get a little burnout, but I don't feel that way at all right now, especially because of the gym. Well, I guess because of that, you know, you have been in the game for a long time, but you have it sounds like you've already started setting yourself up for after mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. But how long? I know I'm not trying to retire. The game, <laughs> but have you thought about like when when makes sense for you now that you have a business? You have young girls. Has there been? Is it 40? Is it 42? Are you even thinking about it, or is there an end game that you're that you're already thinking about at some point? I always just kind of equate it down to one thing, and that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is looking back and saying, "What if?" I don't ever want to say, "What if?" You know, I, will, you know, if I if I cut it too short, I don't want to be that old guy sitting on the couch explaining to my grandkids. You know, could have done this if I would have. No, I won't. No what ifs. I'm gonna hammer it out until I know there's nothing left. And when there's nothing left, I'll know, and then I'll be okay walking away. And I'm not putting any time on that. You know, you've uh, you're getting better with age, but uh, how is how is your, uh, your your overall game uh, evolved? How has mm -hmm. it changed through the years to, to make you get better? Uh, I'm fighting smarter. You know, in my earlier part of the career, I used to go out there and just bang it out, and uh, you know, I been known for getting out there and just leaving it all on bloody mess and uh, you know I still go out there and give it all you know I'm never gonna shy away it shows in the last fight got cracked really good um, you know definitely a 10 8 round first round but it was able to battle back win the next two um, but I fight smarter you know I I use my technique um, and my distance to control things a little bit better, set stuff up. I, I'm a very greedy fighter now, meaning I only want to do what I want to do. I'm not going to give you an inch if I can. Um, instead of saying, okay, I'll meet you in the middle and we'll just duke it out. So I think that equates to a lot of uh, me getting better. I know that the USC will continue to evolve with mm -hmm. different fighters and new faces coming around and so forth, but, mm -hmm. but just your thoughts on, on, on like, like and see maybe perhaps Connor getting back into the ring and, mm -hmm. and you know, what it does and you know, what are your thoughts on um, you know, I hope he does. You know, I think for his sake, I think he would want to, you know, like kind of talking about what ifs, you know, never being able to say what if, you know, he's at a point where he's obviously one of the, I mean, best in the, in the world. He's still got to beat a few guys to, uh, you know, to kind of keep that ball rolling at this point because he's been away for so long. Um, but I don't see him not wanting to get back. He's a fighter, you know. All fighters want to get back. I understand the layoff. If I made that kind of money, I'd take that kind of layoff too. You'd see me on a yacht in some some ocean hanging out as well. But I think there would be a time where you get that itch again, and he, he's going to have to scratch it. So you, uh, we'll see him back, I think. Something about him getting back into the octagon. Huh? Yeah, I think, he'll, I think he'll be back. I think he'll be back within the year. In my opinion. Who you're on the same fight could be in retirement. Whoever wins. I'm most curious about, you know, a lot of fighters talk about a 165 pound division. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you find that there's a need for that? Yeah, I do. I think, um, I'm not saying I would or wouldn't go 65, uh, but I think, I think it's good. Every 10 pounds is good. You know, the more, the more champions that we have, I think, the, the better, you know. Obviously, you don't want too much saturation of the sport, but uh, um, I think it'd be good because that 15 pound is a big jump. You know, I mean, you can see considerable size difference in 15 pounds, especially with guys cutting the way they do. Um, and so, you know, I, I I think the 65 would be good, but I really think the 95 would be good too because that's, I mean, you're talking big weight. Um, so I, I would like to see a 65, a 95, 205, you know, every, every 10, and then, you know, once you get a little bit bigger. I'd like to see the, the unlimited, too, personally, just as a fan perspective. <laughs> Who are the two or three fighters that you would go pay to see fight right now that, you, that you're mm. impressed with? To go see, to go pay. 
um, man, I'm cheap. Um, uh, <laughs> I got two daughters, you know, you got to watch that stuff at home. Uh, no, um, let's see here. There's so many good guys. There's so many entertaining fighters nowadays. But I like the, the old school gritty guys, you know. Uh, I like Matt Brown, man. I like Matt Brown. I like Donald Cerrone. Um, I like the Khabib Ferguson fight. If I wasn't fighting on that card, I'd be I'd be watching that one for sure. I'm a, a big a big fan of that one. Um, there's lots. Of, the 55 division, 70 division, all the top echelon guys there um, are, are great. I like them. There's the whole sports just got so many good guys, and I, it drives me nuts when there's so much attention towards one or two guys when there's so much great talent right now, as opposed to uh, you know kind of gravitating towards that and really appreciating the broad range of talent, you know. So there's a lot of guys I'd pay to go see.